So a while back, I found and shared a solution that I found to this problem uh, involving putty and tmux and copying and pasting, which it's posted here in the Stack Exchange question, but basically it boils down to if you have uh, line wraps or uh, panes that are side by side in tmux and you try to copy paste, uh, check out what happens with your selection. So it'll actually span across that vertical separator. And then when you attempt to paste that, it ends up looking pretty nasty. Now the solution that I shared was a bit complicated and a bit dry, uh, but I created an image to explain it. And I'm not sure if that helped or caused more confusion. So I wanted to go back, revisit this, and walk through it with a video to help illustrate. So the magic that makes this whole thing work is this thing called ANSI printing, which uh, is intended to be used so that you can print out a file on the remote system uh, to a printer connected to your PuTTY client, uh, or your other SSH client for that matter. And so Putty's got support for it down here in this remote control printing. And then I'll show you what the setup looks like on the server side as well. So the solution starts off here in your tmux configuration file, basically setting up uh, the Y key bound to copy and pipe the output of your current selection uh, into a file. So basically when you select uh, such as this, then when you press Y with that selection, it will take this action uh, that we've defined here, which is basically just to dump that into a file. Uh, and then this file is on the server where Tmux is running. So once I have this in my configuration file, if I select some text and then press Y on here, uh, and if I go check that file, the selection that I just had will be in the file. So let's try that. Now the next part is just an indefinite loop. Uh, and it is kind of primitive and I look for other ways to do it, but I couldn't find anything that was largely supported without the use of any other tools or you know, utilities that had to be installed. So I'm gonna settle for this. Um, there's not much impact as far as overhead or anything. Uh, yeah, it's not pretty, but it definitely works. So basically, uh, every five seconds, it'll run through and it'll execute uh, these tput commands, mc5 and mc4, and in between, it will cat the contents of this file that we just put the uh, selection into. So the tput commands are special, and that's what signals uh, the ANSI printing. So tput mc5, we turn on printing, and then anything that appears on the screen uh, will go to the ANSI printer, uh, and then we turn it back off. And we just keep doing that over and over again. Now this loop gets kicked off and put into the background, and then our tmux starts after that. So at this point, every five seconds, the server is going to turn on ANSI printing and send that blob that was our clipboard back to PuTTY, but PuTTY's not going to do anything with it. Ideally, we would be able to just tell PuTTY to save what it received to a file on my client system, but I don't think that anyone ever intended for this ANSI printing to be used in this way. So we do have to create sort of a dummy printer on our client. So over here, we're going to use the uh, Microsoft XPS document writer. And you type in the name for the port here, and that results in uh, anything that goes to this printer will appear in a file in your user profile slash documents folder. So then you just configure PuTTY to send ANSI printer output to that newly created dummy printer. And anything that comes through will go to this PuTTY printer file in your documents folder.
So I would say that part right there is the most impressive part of this whole thing. Um, the fact that we were able to take something from the remote system, send it through PuTTY, and now it's in a file on our client system. So at this point, we're almost done. And uh, there's definitely several ways you could go from here. Um, I personally chose to go with auto hotkey. Uh, if you're better with PowerShell or you have another, you know, uh, favorite program that you want to use, you could definitely use that. And I'm interested to see if anyone else has any better ways to do this. Um, but I just use a real simple auto hotkey script. Um, and actually, this one here, now that I look at it, this is the older version. I, I should update that. Uh, I came up with a more concise way to do it. So this is the new version I've got. Um, and it, it basically just reads from a file and writes to directly to your clipboard uh, on your client system here. And then you specify the file. So it just does it in one big sweep. Uh, the previous way, it actually sent the keys, I believe. Yeah, so one by one, it would send the keys and it was kind of slow, uh, not ideal. So with this in place, let's see the new and improved uh, copying and pasting. Uh, remember before it was not pretty, it was spanning the vertical divider and selecting all kinds of things that we didn't want. So if you're not familiar with Tmux, uh, you prefix your commands with control B and we'll do open bracket to begin the selection. And then at that point you can move around here. Um, mine's configured for VI copy mode, so you can do uh, VI shortcuts. So you can search for, uh, search for things and jump to those places and that sort of that sort of enhancement. Uh, to begin the selection, you press space bar, and then you could just move around with the arrows like this. You can scroll up, it's just scrolling up in this pane. Uh, as you can see with the yellow, we're not selecting anything that we didn't want to select. Um, but this is all just standard Tmux, um, standard Tmux features. So now we press our new uh, Y key binding. It'll dump into the file. Uh, let me get some more to paste it here back on my client system. This word pad, we'll put it in something uh, mono space, and then we signal auto hotkey in my case um, with my uh, Windows key plus V. You don't see it do anything, but it read the file on my local system and then put that into my clipboard buffer. And then now we just do a control V to paste, and there's the output. It actually takes longer to talk through than it does to go through this if you're just copying and pasting. So pretty cool stuff. Like I said, uh, let me know if you have a better way once you have that file on the client system, a better way to get it into your clipboard. I would love to hear uh, some ideas. So that's all. Thanks.